When they first announced the Canon EOS R6, I was disappointed to hear that it only had IPB compression type and not all I. So I decided to do a test to see if IPB was good enough. And you can see that video up here. Now I couldn't tell a difference, but the problem with that was I only did a few tests in my room. So I decided to come here today to do a bit more in-depth testing with a bit more movement and variation. <sighs> People have said it's good to film moving water, like the ripples in the water, because apparently IPB can't keep up with that stuff. And also I'm gonna capture some slow-mo footage and uh, heavily grade it as well. So I'm gonna go and do some tests now, then go home, put the footage on the computer, have a look, and then we'll have a chat about the differences if there are any. So I'm ready for this. Let's go and see what the differences are. Just to let you know, I filmed all of the tests straight to the SD card in the camera. Get this, get this jacket off first. Just to give you a better idea of what it's like straight from the camera if you're not using any external recorders or anything like that. And I've also not converted any of the footage to ProRes, so it literally is straight from the camera. I'm not going to talk about the technical differences between IPB and All Eye and different compression types and stuff like that because I'm not going to pretend that I know all about it or that I fully understand it either. All I'm bothered about are these three main points. Can I see a difference in the picture quality? Can I colour grade with it? Or does it slow down my computer? In fact, I'm filming this little bit now in IPB and I'm going to edit it in a second to see if my computer works okay with it or if there's any choppiness or lag or anything like that. So I'm back in All Eye now and uh, just reviewing this little bit of footage that I've just filmed before. Absolutely fine to edit, no problems whatsoever, no choppiness, no lag. Colours seem fine, I've put the same preset on as that I normally use. Audio seems the same, it's fine, not noticed any difference. I've, now I've filmed a load of examples but I've not included all of them because they, they're all quite similar and there's a lot to go through as well but I just wanted to show you the main things and uh, show you the things that I noticed the most difference in, if any. Right, this is all I, 25 frames per second. This is what it's like in a vlog scenario. I'm walking just at a normal, slowish pace. I'm just going into some trees here so it's a little bit darker. And this is all I, so this is what, this is what that looks like. Okay, and now this is IPB vlogging again. I'm gonna do the exact same walk. So at the minute I'm out here, it's a bit of a cloudy day, 25 frames per second, going into this tree area again at the moment. And uh, so we'll see what this is looking like. IPB, quick spin round, walk back up here. Hope no one's looking or seeing me. There we go, IPB. So the first test I did was uh, like a little vlog sequence. I was walking with the camera. I think, to be honest, they were both pretty much the same. I did notice a slight, because I was moving, there was a slight jitter in the movement. You might, you might not be able to pick it up when I put it onto YouTube, but you can tell if you're really looking closely. But if you're not looking out for it, you, you wouldn't have noticed. So it's not a big difference. Having seen it though, and now that I know it's there, I would definitely always choose to film in all eye. It's very, very slight, but I will always use all eye. But have a look at the rest of the tests just to see what you think. The other thing I noticed as well was it was slightly sharper in all of the tests when filming in all eye. You can just see a little bit more detail. So if you want that sharpness in your image, definitely go for all eye. I mean, nobody's said anything about it being sharper. It's just something I've noticed. 
see if you can see that in these examples. You might not be able to tell, but it's, it's there if you look close enough anyway. You've got to look really close. Then I colour graded the vlog footage and again, there's nothing in it. I couldn't tell a difference at all. Look at the footage side by side, colour graded and you can't tell. Well, you certainly can't tell while I'm in Premiere anyway. I don't know if it might be different when I upload to YouTube. And I'll show you some other examples in a bit where I heavily colour grade some of the footage. Now the ripples in the water, this is what loads of people said I should film. So I thought I was really gonna tell a big difference here. And it's difficult to do these tests because the wind is blowing in different directions all the time. So I wasn't getting the same movement of water. I was dropping some pebbles in there as well so you could see the ripple effect. I'm not, again, I'm not sure if you'll be able to tell from the examples, but in IPB, it seemed to be that it was a little bit flickery. Having said that, if you look at the all eye version, once the water was moving the other way after I dropped the pebble in, that was starting to be really choppy as well. So I don't know, it could be down to the, the movement. But again, when color grading this footage, I still didn't notice any difference. So not a problem there either. Considering this was the test that most people wanted me to do, and they were saying you'd notice a really big difference. I really can't. There was, there was a slight bit of jitterness, but as I say, you saw that same jittery effect on the all eye as well when the water was going a certain way so again not too much difference if you didn't put them side by side you probably wouldn't be able to tell unless you really 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 looked closely however on this example here with the log you can see a little bit more detail it's just a bit sharper in all eye so when you put these side by side you can tell just a little bit i don't know what it's going to come out like on youtube but yeah just a slight bit of sharpness there on the all eye I wanted to do some tests where the camera was moving as well, but I didn't have much time to do it all. I wanted to make it fair as well and get the same sorts of shots. So I, I set the tripod up and I just, I just panned and tilted the camera fairly quickly to see if you could tell a difference in the movement or anything like that. And again, slight difference in the sharpness of the image, but when it's moving that quick anyway, you can't tell a difference. It's pretty much the same, to be honest. Now I tried some slow-mo shots. There wasn't much movement happening in this shot, but again, it seemed to work exactly the same as it did in all eye. So no problems there. Color graded it as well. Same thing, still no difference, exactly the same. So, so far, not much in it. So I did a few tests as well in low light. The noise levels seem exactly the same. Color grading, again, I went quite heavy on this one, as you can see, but exactly the same. A lot of people were saying when you start to color grade it, it's different, but really, honestly, I really can't tell. And I've been I've been trying to look as well and see the difference. I've been really getting close in there, and it's it's so so close. I mean, I think technology is that good these days that it, even the the worst version is still good. I think, and I think that's what's happening here. It's still good, so you're not you're not noticing much of a difference. And I've just filmed some normal scenic shots as well and put a little bit of a color grade on them. And again, just really nice. The, the only difference is a little bit of sharpness on the all eye and that's it. So honestly, it's not a deal breaker. Some people have said that Canon have announced that they're gonna put all eye into the R6 as well. So after doing all these tests, it's quite redundant, but still interesting to find out what the difference is anyway, for those of you that are interested. And I'm not being funny here. I've not bodged the test or anything like that. I'm not lying. These are the actual files that I've used. I did use IPB and all I. And there's there's very, very little difference. Maybe my eye just isn't that developed, but I am quite good at noticing stuff. And honestly, it was so hard to find those tiny little differences between the two. So if you're having to look that hard to find it, maybe having only IPB isn't that bad. And then I thought, maybe you can only tell a difference when you upload to YouTube, but I tried that as well. I uploaded a little snippet and again, no difference, you can't tell. And on top of all this, the Canon R6 is filming in more megabits per second than the Canon EOS R. So it's even better quality than what I'm showing you here today. Most people were saying that the biggest difference is gonna be when you film in water but how often do I film water? Unless I'm gonna start a fishing channel anytime soon, which I'm not, I'm not really gonna tell the difference. Yes, a lot of moving shots, but again, the difference was very minor. But if they put that upgrade in anyway, then we don't have to worry.
Now, I'm more than prepared for people saying that I'm not doing the test properly and I should be doing this, I should be doing that and color grading it more and this, that and the other. But the fact is I'm using it in the way that I would be using the camera anyway. So throughout all of these tests, or most of the tests, that's what I'm going to be using it like. And if I can't tell a difference there, or a very small difference, then it doesn't matter. So the R6 with IPB with even more megabits per second is going to be absolutely fine for someone like me. I'm not going to tell you what to buy because that's not what I'm doing. I'm just saying, look at these differences. And if you can tell, then definitely wait for the all eye update or go for the R5 or stick with the R. Anyway, I hope you like these little side-by-side -side comparisons. Let me know what you think. It'd be interesting to see if you can tell a difference and I've totally missed it. But anyway, it's been a fun little experiment and it's been good to see this and it's been good. So anyway, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more gear reviews and tutorials. And uh, I think that's it. See you in the next one. Thanks for watching.